catch. Good girl. Hold. Now one thing need be said also about the process of force fetching. You'll read in different, in different things about using a tow hitch, using different means of doing it. The problem with the, the other ways of doing force fetching, and the reason I do things the way I do here, is regardless, you can always go back to the step out in the field, in the yard, whatever be the case, they always have two ears and you always have a finger and a thumb to go and correct the problem. If you do a tow hitch or some of the other the means of doing it, you have to carry along extra things to get to that point. Drop. Good girl. We're going to let her end on that note. We're going to let her understand that, hey, this is a good place to be up here. Give her a little praise. See, we still don't have a, a ear set up that shows that she's okay with it. She's still pretty freaked out about the whole endeavor, but minimal pressure, just enough to get her to do what we want her to do. And the next time she comes out, the last thing she'll remember is a bump in her mouth, mouth she got praise, so we can start off right on the next foot. Now this is Lacey. Uh, she's about 10 or 11 month old chocolate lab. She's been through a little bit of the force fetching process, but she's a whole different dog than the last dog we showed you. We're going to show you a little bit more in progression about what a dog will do once they've got past the point and the breakdown point of not opening their mouths, you know, taking the pressure. This dog is very soft also, but as the other dog could take pressure and take pressure and take pressure and she still wouldn't open her mouth, see how this dog's starting to get into the mode where she's tilting her head back, she's dropping her ears. She already associates the force fetching table with work, but what she's going to start doing is trying to find ways to eliminate having to do it. This dog can do a great job or she can be what I call a quitter. The quitters are the ones that decide they're not doing it regardless of what the costs are. Now, we're not going to change anything more than stay with the ear pinch because that's the point this dog is at. But see how she starts putting her feet up on me? Everybody thinks that's so cute and that's great that, all oh, the dog wants to do it, she really likes me. It actually is telling you the dog is trying to eliminate having to do any work. It's a means for them to put their feet on you and say, hey, I'm not doing this today. I don't want to do this. Let's do something else. Hey, just like you saw in the collar conditioning videos with the dogs jumping on me and trying to get close to me, this is the same sort of thing, reading the dog to do it. She's doing it as a means to try to eliminate any kinds of pressure. Now you'll see it, here we go, as we're going, she'll start doing it more and more and more. We go back to the same thing, now she'll do it with both feet. She knows that we're going to start working on this. The worst thing you can do is encourage this. Put her foot down, tell her that's enough, enough. Now here we go again, same concept, three fingers in the collar, the ear between the index finger and your thumb. We're going to give her the pressure, fetch. She opens her mouth, willingly, hold. It'll release the ear, hold, go through the same process. Drop, good girl. Here we go again. Notice how she's starting to follow the bumper around. Fetch. She gets the pressure, hold. She understands that. Now notice how she wants to crowd me. The other dog wanted to get away from me. This dog wants to crowd me. She feels if she gets in that safety zone and she gets just inside of it, I can't give her any pressure. Drop. Good girl. Once again, making sure I give her the drop command. Now see how she's starting to reach? She's looking for this to eliminate any pressure before I even give her any. Fetch. Hold. Good girl. What they learn is if I keep this in my mouth and I do when he gives me a command, I do what he asks me to do, there is no pressure associated with it. Now this is a dog that we've been working on the force fetching for probably a couple weeks now. You, went, you saw a dog that was on the force fetching table for the first time, now we've got a dog we've been force fetching for a couple weeks. The duration of time is relative to the dog. Drop. This dog, it took me nearly a week and a half to get her to hold something. She opened her mouth willingly, but it took me about a week and a half to get her to hold something. Now she understands, hey, I can eliminate pressure by grabbing what you know, I've got in my hand here. Now the thing is, if you notice, I'm kind of keeping away from her. If you notice the intensity of the dog is, is increasing, she wants it. Fetch. Hold. Good girl. And notice she's getting even a little bit looser. She's not quite so subdued. Good girl. Drop. But she's in that work mode. Here we go with the feet again. We keep away from that. As you get into the process, See, here we go. As we get into the process, we start distancing the bumper away from the dog and giving her pressure, making her physically reach and grab it. Here we go, fetch. She reaches, hold. Pressure is eliminated when it's in her mouth. Good girl. 